Hi, I'm Dan Lismore, Ground Supervisor at the Western Fair District, and you are in the Western Fair District Wormery. Thanks for joining our webinar today, brought to you by Locomotive Espresso. Great coffee, great castings, the whole nine yards. All right, so more about me. I'm a horticulture technician, a landscape designer, and just a guy who needs to see a little bit less green waste in the landfills. So we started taking all our compostable waste and running it through a compost program. So let's give you a tour of the wormery and show you how it works. So we started the wormery program in January of 2020. And when we started the program, we just had a couple of these totes right here. And we started it off with about two pounds of worms. You can see, I think there's only one pound of worms left in here because we took them all out. But the bins are set up in such a way that you cut, you drill breathing holes in the sides up here for the worms to live in. It's a double bin system so that you get your fluid coming out the bottom down here. Well, the whole system was kind of not what we needed it to be. We needed something a little heavier to pull off what we were doing. So now we're actually up to tables. We're up to 22 tables in total, actually. All the tables are approximately four by eight feet. These tables here that we have are tray tables. So these tables do not have a flow through feature to the bottom. These tables require a full extraction about every eight to 10 weeks. So we dig out all this material that you see in here. That's a mix of compost and vermicompost. You've got your newspapers in here, all your shreddings. There's worms in there too. If you could look close enough, you'd see those with their eggs. So what happens with this after eight to 10 weeks is we take all this material off of this table. It's all run through a sifter and we try to get out. That's how the castings are extracted. We end up having separate all these little bits and pieces of garbage. We have twigs, all sorts of stuff comes through the process resulting in beautiful worm compost, which is one of the best nutrients you're gonna get. These tables are much better than what we had been using before, but we were able to find a better way even yet. We've got our flow through tables that take a lot of the work out of this for our small team. Team's gotta take care of a lot of stuff outside the building. We don't just hang around wriggling worms all day. Let me take you over to the flow tables. Okay, here is a flow through worm table. So the way this thing works, it's about four feet by eight feet, looking at probably about 32 square feet of compost filled, wriggly, wormy goodness right in this table here. Uh, worms, you generally look at about a pound to a pound and a half of worms per square foot in a fairly healthy table. The way that a flow through table works and the way that it's got a mild advantage over the tray tables is that you feed the product in the top and then the worm castings come out the bottom. These worms tend to live in the top couple of inches of the table so that they are not disturbed during the process. So that works really well. You don't have to reestablish the whole entire ecosystem for these worms, looking pretty good. So we feed in once again about the same amount of compost in the top as what material comes out the bottom of the thing. Underneath here, we got a totally permeable membrane and it's just composed of more or less the castings and the vermicompost that's compo uh, kind of come together as a whole and become a pretty solid little substrate. So uh, based on this math here, we've got about 700 square feet of worm tables in this entire basement, which leaves us probably around 700,000 worms plus or minus. So yeah, that seems like an awful lot of worms and it absolutely is an awful lot of worms. So what I'm gonna do, I get asked questions quite a bit, and so I'm gonna try to hit you with a little bit of worm facts, facts about the worms themselves that maybe you can take out and impress your friends with. What we've got is worms themselves actually have five hearts. Worms can be cut in half and they can regenerate, but the tail end doesn't do it. It's the head end that regenerates. The head end is the end with the band on there that you can see called the clitellum. The clitellum is a reproductive organ on worms and every worm is a hermaphrodite. They all have the same parts and they all get together in the same basic way, exchanging sperm to get the process rolling. So worms themselves reproduce best in an environment that's between 65 degrees and 85 degrees. And the moisture, the content of moisture has to be in the neighborhood of around 70. You have to be able to squeeze a drop of fluid out of there and one drop's good, too many drops and you probably got a little bit too much humidity in your worm table. So that's something to keep an eye on. A pound of worms in a red wriggler sense is about a thousand worms. So that's quite a little population you get going there. Lots of facts we've hit you with here. More than happy to answer any questions that you might have. Feel free to hit us up and we'll see what we can do. Try to get you some good answers. Now let's go check out how we feed and harvest the worms. All right, 
So I told you about continuous flow tables and here we are standing beside one right now. So let's show you how we go about going through the harvesting, feeding, bedding and watering of these tables uh, to, get a, to get a good result at the end here. So the first thing we usually do is we take the table, we try to kind of knock it down, get the thing graded out, get it kind of leveled up. We try to get rid of stuff like this, the branches, the twigs, any plastic wrappers that you get because you get quite a few. Even hit the pail with that shot, that's pretty good. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit of compost. Now you try to add as much compost as castings are being provided out the bottom. It's kind of a, it's kind of a sliding scale, it depends on how your tables are, how far along they've gotten, all that good stuff. But we feed the tables up with a little bit of compost, throw it on there, kind of get it spread around real nice, break the lumps up. Then you go down with a little bit of dry bedding material. Now you can use, you can use your newspapers, you can use leaves, we've got shredded paper here. So it goes on, the worms can eat the bedding, they also look for shelter in the bedding, the, the, whole, the whole thing. It takes a lot of the moisture out of the different compost and, and feed materials, so it's pretty, pretty good stuff that way. And there's lots of it around. Then the next thing you do is you want to take your watering can, you try to use dechlorinated water if you can because the salt in the chlorinated water can affect the worms. We've never had any issue with it, but you can have that issue. So. What you want to do is you don't want to put a ton of water on. Once again, back to that 70% humidity. When you squeeze these things, when you squeeze the soil, you want to get a drop of moisture out of there. I'm not getting one, no matter how hard I squeeze. So we're gonna need a little bit more water in here. So you put her on, not too aggressive. We don't want to drown them. It's not a swimming pool. So we put her on good. And then you kind of just keep an eye on things as you go. And then as far as the harvesting aspect, the way we had described this table earlier is you feed the top of the thing. The worms live in this top three inches or so. When you get underneath the table over here, that's when you're gonna get into your harvesting. So I'll show you that right now. Hello there, how are you today? This is the bottom side of the continuous flow worm table that I just mentioned to you. So what you're dealing with under here is you've got a series of strings, ropes, something across there that allows for a semi-permeable membrane here for the vermicompost that includes the worm castings and stuff to fall through. Now the way this works is the table is strung from side to side that allows this material to fall through as it, as it matures and ages. And what you end up after having this stuff fallen through the table, you end up with this stuff here. This is your vermicompost. What you got in there is you got your worm castings, you got a few worms, you got a bunch of paper, any of the compost that hasn't broken down is also in here. You got little twigs and things like that. This is the product that goes through the sifter in order to provide you with the beautiful rich worm castings that you got to have in the garden. All right, let's go take a look at the compost and how it's put together. Here we are. Let's take a look at all the various components of the compost. So what we have here is I've kind of got stuff arranged a little bit in the way that it goes into the bins. So I've got my dry materials over here. I've got a lot of my granular materials here, such as coffee grounds, sawdust, eggshells. That stuff works in the worm's gizzard to break down the food that the worms take in. The worm takes food in through its mouth. They can travel frontward or backward, but they only eat when they're heading forward. So that's kind of a neat little fact there for you too. Time's not wasted here. So what we've got, you got your bedding here, newspaper. It's the dry material like we had talked about earlier. The same thing with the cardboard. Cardboard can be used really readily. I'm sure we've all got a few of these little coffee cup holders around. Uh, egg holders, any of this kind of stuff. It's all dry material for your worm bin. If you break it up and pre-soak it, it really breaks down easily. You got leaves, things like leaves and straw. Straw, courtesy of Sealster Farms. They were nice enough to hook us up with all sorts of straw. They seem to have quite a bit of it around, so we can use that. And then you get into the sawdust. Once again, same type of thing. This over here is from Locomotive Espresso, our fantastic sponsors have provided us with a little bit of coffee grounds. Once again, the worms use it for chewing up, it goes nice. The coffee grounds are a funny thing. You don't want to put too many coffee grounds in your worm table. A lot of nitrogen in there, a lot of, they can be very, very acidic for the worms, can hurt the skin, affects the skin of the worms. Some other things that affect the worms, you don't want too much citrus fruit in there. You can do a little bit. You don't want a ton of citrus fruit. You'll kind of gauge it as you feed them. You'll realize what they like and what they stay away from. Same thing with onions. Onions are just a little bit too much for the worm's sensitive skin. You gotta be careful how much of that you put in. But I don't find it. That must be a heck of a lot because we haven't any problems with it. 
So then you get folks like Live Fit Foods and our market vendors giving us good things like broccoli, carrots, all the stuff that I generally try to avoid when I'm eating at my own house. So you've got cut flowers, all this pretty stuff. The Halloween decorations, maybe the pumpkins that the kids didn't smash on your front lawn, throw those in the bin. You're gonna make up some great nutrition for these guys. So at the end of the day, all this good stuff goes into the composter. So far, 30 tons of this green waste has been kept out of landfills, been kept out of the dumpsters, kept out of the garbage pails. And what it ends up being is this good stuff right here. That's your worm castings. Everything's in there. You might get a couple of worms. You might get a couple of worm eggs. It's all part of the process. Extremely rich in nutrition. Just great stuff. Great all around natural product. Okay, so since this is not a very convenient size for you to carry home, we have our castings available in a five liter size right here for 10 bucks. If you check your email, there's a code to save you a little bit of cash on here. Usually the bags are 10 bucks. What we're gonna do is there's gonna be another webinar coming up in the near future that's gonna teach you how you use the castings and the benefits of the castings. So from all of us at the Western Fair, I wanna thank you for watching the video. Thanks for signing up and make sure you show up for the next one.